Welcome back to my channel, guys. It's your girl, Coco Styles. And on this channel, we talk about beauty, fashion, and lifestyle. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys what's in my pantry, vegan style. So I'm gonna get started. I am an alkaline vegan 95% of the times. The other 5%, I'm still vegan, but it's not alkaline foods. Um, I do believe in eating it in moderation, so I'm not out here picking out on things that I'm not supposed to put into my body. So I'm gonna get started, guys. And a lot of the things in here, I usually order off of line. That is the only difficult part with being an alkaline vegan, trying to find the stuff in your local farmer's market or grocery store. So I'm gonna start with Kamut. So for those of you guys who eat grits often, um, I substitute my grits for Kamut cereal, Kamut hot cereal. And this is amazing. So for those of you guys out there who are trying to kind of get away from the standard American diet and you love grits, I would recommend trying this. And this is the Bob Red Mill, Red, Bob Red Mill uh, brand. I usually get the organic one. It's only like a couple of cents more. Um, and they just, they changed the packaging. I like this one a little bit better because it snaps. I mean, it's, it's resealable. <clears throat> but this you can use as your replacement for grits. So if you're not going to just go cold turkey being vegan, I would recommend trying to cut out some of the other starchy stuff. Um, and Kamut is gluten-free. So if you are, if you have gluten issues, um, I would recommend getting the Kamut. Okay. So I usually order this off of either Vitacoast or Swanson. And it's pretty fast shipping. So this is stuff that I will have for breakfast. And then I also have Kamut flakes. So Kamut is a grain. And I'll actually show you guys. I'll show you guys the, the full grain. So the, that one grain comes into different, many different forms. So this is the Kamut flakes. And this is like oatmeal. So... Again, this is gluten-free. They also have the spelt version of this, which is not gluten, so you have a choice to pick. Um, I think I have I have a little bit of spelt. It's a, the color is a little bit different. Um, but this is also one of my breakfast choices that I usually pick. And sometimes if I don't use water, I would just make some, what do you call that? Some walnut milk and just kind of make it really creamy and stuff. And these are my grits. And again, this is Kamut flakes and let's see what else so the grain the actual grain for Kamut is here let me show you guys let me see if I can show you guys can you guys see that so this is the full grain of the Kamut and this is good too it's almost like a substitute for rice but it does not taste like rice guys so you have to cook it down really really well or soak it overnight otherwise it'll be hard but this is the main grain. So this grain, they take this and make the, the hot cereal and they make the flakes. And one more thing, they actually have the cereal puffs. <laughs> so all four of those things come, well, the three of those things come from that one grain. And this is the cereal. And this kind of tastes like Honey Smacks without the honey guys. So what I usually do with this is I would make some walnut milk and then I would um, pour a little bit of agave in the milk and then just a tad bit on the cereal. Not too much because I don't want it too sweet. And here's my cereal. That's Kamut cereal. I'm going to link this stuff for you guys. I, I would recommend giving it a try and just trying to stay away from starches and stuff these days, um, especially with everything going on. You want to try to be, you want to have a mucusless diet during these times. Um, I would recommend and just trying to stay healthy. So those are some of the things that I do eat for breakfast. Um, sometimes I would make spelt bread or like a muffin or something out of spelt or garbanzo bean flour, which is also chickpeas. So those are some of the things that I keep in my closet all the time. Um, I also buy wild rice. Now, wild rice is actually not a rice. It's actually a grass. Um... So I get this, it's a little expensive, but it's worth it. Some people do soak it overnight. I'm not gonna lie to you, when I first went 
alkaline vegan. It was cold turkey, but I really was not trying to soak this rice. I said, if I cannot just cook it, I'm gonna struggle with this lifestyle. So one day I just decided to just start it out with a cup of wild rice and a cup of, two cups of water. And it was still hard. I got up to probably five cups of water to one cup of this rice and it was perfect. So that's my ratio that I use now. And this is the only way I can do it without having to soak it overnight. So that's wild rice. So this is something, this is another one of my staples that I keep in here. Um, and I also keep in here sesame seeds. I like to sprinkle this on salads and I like to sprinkle this inside of just like some dishes that I make any stir fries. So I keep sesame seeds. It's not a staple, but if I feel for a taste, I would, you know, um, buy it. Um, walnuts, I keep walnuts in here because I make so much milk and I make a lot of like homemade trail mixes. <laughs> so I keep walnuts in here. Um, my Brazil nuts are rather low, as you can see. So what I would do with Brazil nuts is I would make like a dressing, a salad dressing, or I would make a creamy dressing for like pasta. And I'll show you guys which pasta I use in a second. And when I was talking about that 5% <laughs> non-alkaline is cashews. So I have cashews, I have pumpkin seeds, and I have popcorn. These are not on my list to eat. However, um, cashews is a good substitute for cheese. Also, that's not on my list. <laughs> and I really try to not use it is nutritional yeast. These two together will make your dressing taste like Caesar salad dressing, Caesar dressing. So try that out. Cashews, a couple of uh, Brazil nuts, and some nutritional yeast, and you have delicious dressing. But I would definitely season it up because it can be very bland. So that's my nuts and stuff. Those are my snacks. Then I also always keep, um, what else? This is not on my list either. <laughs> this is raw organic pistachios. Um, I always buy this too. I usually get unsalted. If I do get salted, it's not really that bad from where I buy it from, but um, these are so good. Like they're so expensive, I don't know why. So that's something that I usually get for a snack. Another staple, two staples, dry mangoes and dates. So in my farmer's market, they have every type of dry fruit you can possibly think of. But I noticed that on some of the packaging, you would notice that it's mixed with some sort of sugar or something. These are just 100% mango. So I get these because they are so good and it's just the mango. And then the dates are just the dates. I don't eat these by themselves. Um, I'm not really a sweet person, but um, I would mix into some milk or whatever. And then that's my sweetener for that. And I just started recently buying raisins. So as you can see, it's not in a container because I recently started buying is I've never used to like raisins. I just thought they were so gross, but I did a raw vegan diet for like seven days and I needed some snacks. So desperate times call for desperate measures. And I bought this and it's crazy because I said to myself, like why I never tried them before. I just didn't like the way they look, which is crazy. So I usually make, th put this with some, some nuts and stuff and make like a little trail mix and these are my raisins. And again, that little notice that I was saying on here is just the raisins. There's another brand that they have in there, but it has a whole bunch of sweetness in it. So I don't get that. All right. So then my flour, because I don't, because I don't buy regular flour, I buy spelt flour. And this is the white spelt, which is probably not the best but it's better than a regular all-purpose flour. So I would use this once in a while if I wanted to make like pizza or something, or if I wanted some, because it has a different consistency from the wheat spelt. So I usually order this. Again, I have to order a lot of my stuff and make some bread or some muffins or pizza, a pizza dough, whatever. 
Um, so this is good. I'm actually going to link them too because I recently found this company because it was very hard finding this belt. And shipping was really, really good. And that's the white belt. So... And also, let's see what else. So I have Spelt Kamut. Um, here's my other 5% <laughs> kidney beans. But let me tell you guys, since I do not eat beans often because I was strictly alkaline for probably two years straight, when I eat these, it's just a no-go for my stomach. But sometimes I do it, but it's sometimes it just it just doesn't work for me. But I'll buy this and I keep garbanzo beans in here. Um, this is another staple of mine. So this is something that I keep in my closet, in my pantry. And I keep the white quinoa, quinoa. And I also keep the red quinoa in here also. I just get a small one because this has like a really bitter taste to me. So I'll keep that. And then I actually have some spelt grain, which is kind of similar to the Kamut. Um, again, they look they look the same to me when you cook them, but you have to soak these overnight because it's so tough cooking these. But it's actually really good. And it, this is not gluten-free. Um, and then my noodles, I buy Kamut noodles or spelt noodles. And I have some spelt one here. I don't like to mix them because they do have a different consistency. That's why it's still sitting like this. But I usually get this, and this is better than regular pasta. It does not taste like your regular standard pasta, but it digests in your system completely different. And I will tell you, when I eat this, I can eat a lot and I will not feel full. Um, I won't feel bloated or anything like that. So I would recommend trying this. this if you're trying to change your diet around, um, I would recommend just looking into alternatives for the things that you currently eat. Going cold turkey isn't for everybody. Um, I went cold turkey. I believe I told my story because of breast cancer that they say runs in my family. So I just wanted to just be a little bit more cautious on what I was putting into my body. So let's see what else. So I have some, I have some teff flour. I have some garbanzo bean flour. So my garbanzo bean flour, which is made out of garbanzo beans, I would take this, season up the flour. Um, sorry, no, I would take this, put some walnut milk, season it up, right? Make like a, a milk batter. And then I would take the white stuff and make fried mushrooms and it tastes so amazing guys it tastes like chicken oh my goodness and it's not all mushrooms that are fried equally so i would say oyster mushrooms taste really really good fried and if you wanted to cheat a little bit you can put some obey on it um the only thing with the obey i believe it has msg in it i think it may not um it may just be the ingredients honestly and fry it up, it kind of tastes like seafood, like shrimp. And then if you wanted to make regular, like, well, uh, regular fried um, mushrooms, it'll taste like chicken. <laughs> so that's my garbanzo bean. Um, and then I got some goji berries. I keep goji berries and just put a few in, the, in my smoothies. And I have some, the other thing that's not on my list, which is flax seeds. Um, I don't use these often, but once in a while. So, that's that for that stuff. My seasonings and stuff, I keep here on this little rack here. Um, standard seasons, cayenne pepper, basil, which is not on my list. Pepper is not on my list. Sea salt, yes. Uh, onion powder, oregano, yes. And I have a couple of other ones that I'm not supposed to have that I don't use often, but it's not, it's not bad because the majority of the stuff that I do eat is on my list. Um, what else do we have here? So as far as like oils and stuff, when I'm frying my food, I use grapeseed oil, which is here. I like this brand a lot. Um, grapeseed oil and 
Occasionally, I would use sesame seed oil. It actually has a really good flavor. I, I like sesame seed oil and it cooks, cooks my food different. Sesame seed oil. Um, olive oil I have, I do not heat up my olive oil. I do not cook with olive oil. I've read multiple things where you should not heat this oil up. So if I make like a kale salad because kale is so dry, I would pretty much um, chop up the kale and put some of this on it and then season the kale up and put like raw onions and stuff like that. But olive oil I keep. And I have some avocado oil. Now, nah. It has a taste to it that I'm not really too fond of. That's why I have a small bottle. <laughs> so, um, some people like it. I'm not really a fan of it. So, I probably use it in my hair. <laughs> um, that's all that I have for that stuff. And then, let's see what else I have. That's it. I have some stuff here that I don't. Oh, I recently just bought this. I haven't used it yet which is some dried noni fruit. Um, maybe I'll make some today. I'm gonna make some tea. My mom used to take this before she passed away. Um, she used to drink non noni juice a lot. Well, we used to order it for her. So this, I'm gonna try it out today. But this is the full, this is the whole fruit, if you guys can see. Yeah, that's why I said this. I don't usually like to keep the stuff in here in the plastic. Um, I have some paper towels in here, just a little bit. I have extra garbanzo beans. I have some nori sheets. I have nori sheets. And what do I have? Some kelp. I do have some sea vegetables in here. And what's this other one? Pacific Arame. I keep this too. Um, let's see. And then, then I also have, let's see, some spring water. You guys can't see it, but I buy spring water. That's what I keep in my home. I do not use faucet water. Um, I don't use filtered water either. So I order water from a spring water company that's local. They deliver it to my home. It's a little pricey, but hey, sometimes things that are good that are good for you cost a little bit more. So I don't drink coffee, so I put it on my water. Put the money into my water, um, and that's it. And the rest of the stuff in here is just extra seasoning that I keep over here. I do have some soursop leaves. Um, I have some of that and what else? And that's it guys. So that's what's in my pantry. I hope you guys like this pantry overview. Um, if you like videos like this, please comment below. Let me know if you would like to see more vegan stuff. I may try to incorporate that a little bit more or um, at least one of my videos for you guys. Um, again, I'm not a regular vegan, I'm an alkaline vegan. 95% of the time. So we don't have a lot of stuff that we can cook, but I can make some dishes for you guys. But if you stay to the end of this video, please comment Coco, we see you. And don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and comment for me. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.